Hello everyone, um, my name is Nihar Haryadi. I'm a medical student, a second year medical student at Central Michigan University. Um, I'm here to just talk to you a little bit about a case study I saw in Tampa, Florida at St. Joseph's Children's Hospital. Um, we saw a five-year-old child um, that presented with a persistent cough um, and ended up being a mature uh, mediastinal teratoma. So a, a little bit about um, anterior mediastinal teratomas. Um, they are of germ cell origin um, and they grow between the two lungs. Um, they generally contain all of the embryological layers, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the exo ectoderm. Um, so they occur generally in about five to seven percent of children. Um, the incidence in, is significantly lower in children than in adults, but it is very crucial to catch it in children um, because their symptoms are a lot worse. Uh, most of the cases are benign, um, but those ones that are not benign um, generally occur in children. Their symptoms are worse, um, and so we want to catch those early. Um, and it causes significant respiratory issues if the mass gets very large. Um, but in general, these anterior mediastinal teratomas um, present in people who are 20 to 40 years old. So the general presentation um, of the teratomas, most of the cases are symptom asymptomatic. Um, about 53% of cases are asymptomatic. Um, they generally present on a routine chest radiography um, for various reasons. Um, if, if they come in with any respiratory issues or any chest pain, chest tightness, things like that, um, a chest x-ray or a chest CT may be ordered by the physician um, and then it's diagnosed that way. So generally these teratomas present with dyspnea, neck mass, chest pain, or pulmonary infection. Um, and pediatric patients usually present with multiple of these symptoms or they are completely asymptomatic. So these uh, teratomas are difficult to diagnose without some sort of CT or chest x-ray um, or any respiratory symptoms. So it's very difficult to diagnose them asymptomatically. Um, but in general, they're diagnosed uh, by CT or MRI of the chest. So now on to um, this case presentation. We had a five-year-old female present um, with a persistent dry cough um, without any other associated pulmonary um, complaints. So uh, the child had a recent um, RSV infection so the cough was attributed to that. Um, and then the patient also had a history of asthma. Um, and so all the cough was attributed to the recent RSV infection and the um, family history of asthma. So albuterol was prescribed um, and no ra radiography was performed. So for about two months, um, nothing was done. And, um, but still the five-year-old female's um, cough uh, continued to pers persist despite the um, albuterol therapy. Um, and so the uh, family didn't know what to do. Um, so instead of going back to the hospital, um, they uh, sought out a private cardiologist um, and an echocardiogram was done and it was found to be normal. No abnormalities, no issues with blood flow, nothing, no cardiomegaly, nothing like that. Um, and then the mother denied any past cardiac complaints um, besides the cough. And the patient was very active and did not tire easily, even despite the cough. So the family history was positive for asthma and kidney problems. Um, and then the patient has a history of joint hyperflexibility. 
But besides that, there were no other past medical complaints. And the echocardiogram was normal. So at this time in March 2023, two months after the initial um, uh, physical exam, a chest x-ray and CT were ordered. And then the x-ray showed a significant cardiac silhouette. Um, and then the CT showed a large anterior medial, mediastinal mass. So next, next uh, um, tests and measurements were performed. Um, so in this first picture, um, we have the pre and post chest x-ray images of the patients before and after the surgical resection of the mass. So as you see in the left um, image, you have a very large cardiac silhouette and in the on the on the on the patient's right side and then as you can see on the right image um, that silhouette is almost completely gone after surgical resection and on the the right image we have a coronal ct scan of the chest um, pre-surgical resection of the mass so the x-ray as we as we showed was showed significant cardiac silhouette and the CT scan showed large well circumscribed anterior mediastinal mass measuring six and a half by six by eight point six centimeters. So the mass was heterogeneous um, and it contained macroscopic fat, coarse calcifications, and solid components. There was mass effect on the ha on the heart, especially in the right atrium, and uh, a beta HCG and alpha fetoprotein and a CA125 uh, tumor test. They were all done, and they were all found to be negative. So most likely, this this mass was benign in nature. So the diagnosis. So in June 2023. Um, the after uh, CT and chest x-ray, um, the mass was officially diagnosed um, as a benign mature teratoma. Um, and so this uh, teratoma was uh, successfully resected at St. Jo Joseph's Children's Hospital in Tampa. And so the image on the right shows the mediastinal teratoma uh, in, in, during surgery um, in the thorax. And then on the right, we have the mediastinal teratoma um, being measured um, by the surgeon. And after the mediastinal mass was successfully resected, um, the pathologist uh, biopsied the mass um, and the mediastinal teratoma um, measured seven centimeters by six centimeters and it arose adjacent to the normal thymus thymus was not enlarged, um, and it demonstrated solid and cystic components, as well as bone and solitary tooth. So it composed of the ectoderm, as well as the endoderm and the mesoderm. And this is a um, microscopic view um, of the biopsy um, when it was sectioned of the tumor. Um, so the pathologist uh, uh, had a microscopic examination of representative sections of the tumor, um, and it demonstrated several features typical of mature teratomas, including fat, respiratory tract, cartilage, bone, skin, and glial tissue. Um, the immature or malignant elements were not identified, so this was confirmed as a benign mass, um, as a benign uh, mature 
teratoma. Um, so this is taken on a low power microscopic view of the mature teratoma, demonstrating the respiratory glial and fat, fatty tissue um, on the microscope. So we saw the patient again um, in follow-up in July 2023 and the family reported that the cough had improved significantly um, since resection. Um, the post-operative radiography showed very normal um, cardiac sil silhouette. A CT was done as well, and that was also normal with no abnormal masses um, or abnormal anatomy. So a little bit um, more about the anterior mediastinal mass. Um, so the tumors in the anterior mediastinal, mediastinum include thymoma, thyroid goiter, soft tissue sarcomas, and lymphoma. Um, so mature teratomas occur in other areas, such as the sacrococcygeal area, um, this is actually the most common um, place that teratomas can arise. Um, and second is the anterior mediastinum. Then you can also get mature teratomas in the cervical, central nervous system, and the retroperitoneal regions. But generally, um, the prognosis of these patients is usually very good, almost excellent, um, following a surgical resection of the mass. Um, so as we discussed uh, previously, um, it's very difficult to diagnose mediastinal masses without radiography. Um, that's why it's really important that any respiratory issue, any abnormalities in the chest, any um, bulging, any neck masses, these things um, need to be radio need, need, need some sort of radiography, whether it's a chest x-ray um, or a CT or an MRI of the chest in order to rule out this. Even though it's very rare, um, we'd like to diagnose these early um, so the child can uh, have a good outlook of life. So radiography is a simple to tool to thoroughly investigate children with persistent cough, strider, noisy breathing, etc. Any respiratory issue, um, generally we want to catch early um, and we want to help the child as much as possible and um, so they can run, play, all the normal, normal things. But this is very unique um, in the sense that um, not many symptoms arose. Um, it was just the persistent cough um, that lasted for two months without any diagnosis, without any radiography. Radiography is a very simple tool to investigate children, um, and when needed, uh, we, we need to use it, both as physicians, medical students, um, physician assistants, whatever it may be. So in this case, um, a timely intervention with radiography played a critical role in the successful management of our patient at St. Joseph's Children's Hospital um, because without that chest radiography, um, that child would not have been diagnosed for even a couple months because um, the 2019 chest x-ray when uh, the child was only three, year, three years old, um, was normal. Even only in two years, the mass grew as, as big as it was. Um, so it's very important that um, we use radiography. It's a great tool that all, everyone should use as physicians. Um, so this is unique in the sense that it's a different presentation for an anterior mediastinal teratoma. But even so, um, we still need to do more research um, to reg regarding the prevalence 
of anterior mediastinal teratomas um, presenting with a persistent dry cough, specifically in pediatric patients. Um, so there has been research done in adults and how they present, um, but very little research is done in uh, for, for pediatric patients just because it is just not as prevalent in that population. Um, and so hopefully we can change that going into the future um, by using radiography. It's a very simple tool that can investigate any respiratory symptom, sim symptoms um, and we hope to diagnose more um, uh, anterior mediastinal masses that go uh, undiagnosed. And these are just some of the acknowledgements. Um, and if you have any questions, please reach out. Um, I think my email was sent out earlier, if I'm not mistaken. If not, I can send it. All right. Thank you.